Hey everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at the process of exporting our objects out of Blender and then putting them inside of Sketchfab so you can get me your assignment and I can give you a grade. All right, so we have our object inside of Blender and you can see that it's relatively complex and I picked this object to show you that Sketchfab can actually handle pretty complex objects. So you should have no problem uploading yours as well. So if we take a look at the geometry of this, you'll see that it looks pretty complex and it also looks kind of messy. I promise you it's not. The reason it looks this way is because I have gone ahead and pre-triangulated my mesh. So for those of you who wanna do this, make sure that your mesh is all as one object like mine is. So there are some of you who have multiple objects. I just have the one. So just join your objects together, go into edit mode, select your whole mesh and hit control T. Once you do that, you'll see that you'll get all these extra lines in between the faces and such, crossing and zigzagging. And that will essentially make sure that you have good topology that prevents your mesh from breaking down in any unforeseeable ways. So that's always a good practice. Uh, there is an option for us at export time in case you don't know how to do that or are worried about doing that. Um, so for those of you who want to preserve your quad meshes or you know don't want to triangulate your mesh. You can always do it at export time. All right, so another thing that I wanna let you know is if I switch over to material view, I have some basic materials applied here. Um, so we'll take a look at what it takes to get materials into Sketchfab very briefly. I've named mine in very sensically ways. So obviously yellow is named yellow, blue is blue and red is red. If for those of you using other materials such as metals and chromes and things like this or glass, please name your materials after the um, the type of material it is, and I'll show you why when we get into Sketchfab, this can be very useful. All right, so once we're happy with our object, let's make sure that it's the only thing in the scene selected. So you can see here, I've named it Drone Hoist V14, uh, and this is just a sort of hoist that will hold up some sort of drone or something uh, for another scene that I was working on. And uh, we only want that one object selected, and then we're, when we are ready to export it, just go up to File and say Export, and find a wavefront OBJ. And then we'll click on that. And then it will give us all these options here. Now I'm just gonna reset these to the default so that we're on the same page. Yours will probably open up down here. So just click and drag that up. And then I'll name this after myself. So my first name, last name, and I'll capitalize that so I can see the separation and then underscore the name of the object dot OBJ. I have some previous versions here. Um, so keeping in mind that we selected our object, the first option that we want to turn on is selection only because I don't want the floor or the light in the scene. I just want the object that I got selected, uh, that I have selected. And uh, so we'll tick that on. We'll leave animation ticked off. We need apply modifiers turned on if we're using modifiers. So for those of you using a mirror modifier, subsurf modifier, you can either apply those inside of Blender or do it at export time using this option here. Use modifier render setting, we can leave that off. Uh, include edges turned on, please. Um, smooth groups and bit, bit flag smooth groups, we can turn those off. We do want to write normals. We do want to include UVs, especially those of you who are using texture maps, please leave that on. Um, in our case, because I am using materials, we're going to write materials and you'll see that if I hover over that, it says write out MTL file. For those of you that are not using materials, you can leave this off and it will only write the OBJ and not the MTL. Now, for those of you who don't want to triangulate your faces inside of Blender, you can simply leave this, uh, you can tick this on so that you can triangulate it at the export time. Otherwise, you can leave it ticked off and it'll preserve all of your quad topology. Um, if you upload to Sketchfab and you notice that you have some popping issues where faces are doing some weird wibbly wobbly nonsense and you're not really quite sure why that's happening, uh, try turning this option on and uh, re-uploading it and see if that helps you. Um, otherwise, if it doesn't help you, feel free to reach out to me by email and I'll try to do my best to solve any problems that you have and uh, get back to you on that. So we want to leave right NURBS and polygroups off. We want objects as OBJ objects on. We want objects as OBJ groups and material groups off. And we want to turn on keep vertex order. Now the scaling we can leave by default, obviously the 3D printer people would have changed this. They're probably not watching this video anyhow because they would have done the 3D print and not worry about the online upload. All right, so once we're happy with all our settings here, we can simply say export OBJ and Blender will spit out that file for us wherever we choose to save it. There we go. And now let's head on over to Sketchfab. 
So here we want to go to sketchfab.com. This is usually what it looks like when you land on the page. Now I've already signed in. You're going to want to sign up for an account. It's completely free. And there's also an educational discount where if you provide an educational email, so I'm more than sure that the U of R email that's been provided to you would work for this. Um, you can actually sign up for an educational account and get a pro account for free doing that, which is nice because it gives us a couple of extra options to play with inside of our lighting tabs and things like this. So once we're signed up and logged in, um, you may need to verify your email and that email can take you know up to a couple minutes to get to you. It shouldn't take that long. Uh, make sure you use the right email address, of course. Uh, once you've confirmed all of that, we can simply come over to upload. And you could probably do this without confirming, but in order to publish it, you need to confirm. So that's important that you do that. So here you can see that we're going to upload a new model. We have different file formats. You could technically throw your entire blend file in there. Um, but the reason I didn't do that is because I know that a lot of us will be working with floors and lights and cameras and things. And I didn't want everybody seen to come in with a floor and a light and a camera. Uh, so we did the whole select the object, turn on selection only, and export the OBJ that way. So here I'm going to just hit choose file, and I'm going to look for those files that we created. So I want the .mtl and .obj files. I'm just going to hit open, and that'll load those files in for us. And then I can click continue, and Sketchfab will load. I'm just going to call this machine. The title doesn't need to bear my name, it's or your name for that matter. It's fine. And then here you can write a brief, brief description about your object. I'm just going to put test in here. And then for our categories and tags, you can fill those out if you want people to be uh, able to discover your, your work a little more easily. And then private model needs to be set to off. Allow texture inspection is set to on. And then age restricted content can be set to off. I don't think there's anyone in class who's working on suggestive or questionable material. Uh, obviously exercise your judgment with this if you're doing anything that's not safe for work or of that nature, then of course turn this on. So once you're happy with that, just hit continue and then uh, Sketchfab will continue to process our model and will be greeted with a page like this. So I just want to make a note that a lot of people have gotten to this part and thought, okay, well, here it is. I can view it. So I'll just copy this link and send it off. Well, no, that's not how it works. You need to pay attention to this box up here. It says this model has not been published yet. If it's not published and you send me the link, I can't view it. And if I can't view it, that means I can't grade it, which is bad for both of us. So um, make sure that you actually publish this first if you don't want to change any settings. Additionally, you can simply just publish this and then it will give you a link and you can send me that link. A good rule of thumb is when you get that link, email it to yourself and try to open it on your phone. If you can open it and view it on your phone, that means generally I should be able to. Um, so that's usually a test I like to use whenever I'm publishing work. Um, you know, feel free to use it. Uh, another way to check is if your status is set to draft then you know that I can't see it, and that's bad. You could share a preview with me, but I'm going to say I want you to publish it. Uh, please publish it and send me the link. Um, privacy should be set to public. Status will eventually be set to published. And download, you can leave that set to no, or if you want people to be able to download your model, you can turn that on as free. It's completely up to you. If you do turn it on to free, I will be able to download the file from here. I'm not entirely sure what file format it should come in. I think it comes in an OBJ, but I'm not positive. Um, otherwise, just take the OBJ that you've exported and either email it to me or find a way to embed it in your website, or you can upload it to uh, Google Drive and send me the link for that. And, uh, you know, we went over that in class as well. Again, if you have any questions, um, you could probably just email it to me. Honestly, your OBJ file should be small enough to be able to send in an email. Otherwise, use Google Drive and send me the link. That's perfectly fine. All right. So before I publish this, I want to take a look at my 3D settings. So I'm just going to click here. And uh, I am trying to go a little bit quickly through this because I don't want this to be a very lengthy video. Um, here we have some lighting settings, so I'm not too happy with my lighting. It's too bright, so I'll just turn this down a little bit. Then we have our orientation, which will allow us to rotate our light around. I'm just going to set this back to zero. Just wanted to show that to you. Actually, move it like that. Yep. And we have light intensity under the shadow box. We can actually turn off shadows and just leave it flat, flat shaded, uh, kind of, anyhow. I'm going to leave that on. I want to turn my light intensity up a bit. This will increase the contrast. If I turn it down, you'll see it decreases and flattens it out. So I'll leave that there. Leave the shadow bias alone. 
Um, it can produce some very unexpected results and problems. So make sure that you're not messing with that value. And uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Keep in mind that you can actually turn off the environment lights. Obviously, we need some kind of lighting to see. So if I turn that off, there's this lighting section up here. And you can see we can create a three-point point lighting setup. Um, it's not the greatest. There are some, some presets here. Again, like I said, it's not the best. It doesn't really do the greatest job of showing off, you know, your geometry. I generally tend to leave this off and just use an environment light, and that tends to work better, at least for my purposes. And then here you have the ability to change the environment light. They come with some nice presets. Now, some of these might be locked off if you're not using um, a pro account. So make sure that if you want all of these, you sign up for a pro account, and uh, you should have that available to you at that point. Now, you do have the ability to import HDR files. Um, I briefly talked about this with some students in class. So there's, a, there's this awesome website called HDRI Haven, and uh, they actually give away 100% free CCO licensed uh, images here for image-based lighting. So for example, if you wanted to have a beach sunrise scene, you could come down here and download one of these. Generally, I stick with the 2048 version. It's usually smaller and easier to download. Obviously, you can get all the way up to 16K in res. That's a bit excessive in my opinion, but it's there if you need it. And then you could download this, and then you could upload it as your own HDR file if you don't like the HDRs that Sketchfab provides for you. Um, I do think that this is actually locked behind the pro account, so make sure that if you do want to go down that route for any reason, you sign up for a pro account using your educational email. All right, so once we're happy with our lighting settings, which I am here, we can take a look at materials. All right, so remember how I told you to name your materials something sensical just a couple of minutes ago when we were in Blender? Well, if I drop down this menu now, you can see that I have all of my materials and they've all been named. And so I can tell exactly which material is blue so if I select that one, I can come down here to base color and I can change this to color and find a nice blue color. And there you go, that's blue. I can switch this one to red and do the same. Oh man, that's red, awesome. And then switch this to yellow. And if I find a nice yellowish color, there we go. So now my model is actually matching what it looked like inside of Blender. Now, for those of you who are using texture materials, um, you're probably not going to be using metalness and specular or roughness maps. You're probably just going to be using a base color map, most of you. So this is where you would do that. So find the base color for the material group that you want. So let's say for the yellow. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click this and say texture, and you're going to import your texture. And that will put the texture on all the parts that are yellow here, and uh, that can be very useful. Now, for those of you who are using different procedural types of workflows for materials, say we wanted to make this yellow shiny because it's looking rather matte, we can actually come down here to roughness, glossiness, click roughness, and turn down our roughness. And you can see that the further down we turn it, the more shiny it becomes. And then as we work our way up, the reflections become diffused. So that, of course, is going to change depending on what sort of um, look and feel you're going for your materials. It can be very useful. And then for those of you who are working with transparency, we have an opacity section down here. And I'm going to suggest that you leave this on refraction. And if you turn this all the way down, I have the yellow selected. You can see the yellow section becomes transparent and it has some refraction as you can see through it in this section here. And you can also change your index of refraction, which will kind of split the reflection even further and uh, it'll change that. Now, obviously, in this instance, we don't need anything like this, so I'm just gonna crank this back up to 100 and forget these settings down here. In fact, you can even turn them off. So I would suggest turning off anything you're not using. There's some other really interesting and exciting options throughout all of here, uh, but again, we don't need to worry about that. Now, lastly, there are some post-processing effects, so if you want some blooming, which gives you a nice shiny effect, obviously, don't go too intense with this. Okay? change it down to something like, I don't know, seven maybe, because obviously we don't want to kind of drown out the, uh, the view of our object with some crazy effects. We can turn on a vignette, which might be nice for certain things. We can increase the sharpness as well as give it some depth of field. There's all sorts of options here for post-processing. 
Obviously, none of these are required, but I figured you would like to know that they're there. And then we also have anti-aliasing, which is on by default. And I would just leave that on. It just makes everything a little bit cr more crispy and a little less pixelated and, and, you know, problematic. So once you're happy with the settings here, find a good view inside of this viewport. So I'd say something like that's okay. And then we'll just hit save view. And you'll see a little thumb shot, uh, thumbnail screenshot pop up here. This is the view that any user will immediately come to when they click on your, your object. And we're just going to hit save settings. And then we're gonna hit publish. And this is the link now that you wanna to send to me. So we'll just copy that. I'm gonna click in here and say paste and go. And now our model has been uploaded to Sketchfab successfully. So here under status, you can see published. Privacy is public. That's exactly what we want. Um, if you want me to be able to download your file, turn on free. Just keep in mind that anyone else who finds your file will also be able to download it. And then of course you can view it. You can zoom in on it and scroll around. Um, I will be able to turn on the model inspector. And then of course I can turn off your um, your extra final render layers with all of the extra effects and everything. I don't have any effects on here, so it's just gonna leave that on. Um, but I can see your base color, if any metalness or roughness, specular. And then more importantly, I can take a look at your matte cap. So this gives me a real good idea of the kind of surface geometry you're working with, as well as the wireframe. So you don't have to render out the wireframe because I can see it here. Uh, so that's really nice. Yeah, so once you're, you're done with that, um, what you'll do is you will either share the link. So here you can find the link again under share. And you can also get the embed code if you'd like to embed this into your, uh, um, your website through Sketchfab. And it'll take this little box that you see here and it'll kind of stick that inside your website. So here's the code for that if you're familiar with HTML and know how to edit your website in HTML. And then just make sure that somehow, some way, this link either ends up on your website or is emailed to me with your name because I need to know who you are. Don't just send me a link and not tell me who you are. Um, so do that, you know, inside the, the body of the email and if you could inside the subject line. Um, otherwise, just make sure it's on your website and that I can get to your website and see it easily. That way I can give you a grade. So I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you learned anything. Obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and email me. My email is up on the Blackboard, and I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has for me. Uh, like I said, I hope this is useful for you, and I look forward to seeing what everyone turns in for the assignment. All right, thanks for watching, and take care.